Back Welcome check, to the check, show, check, which is totally check, the check, best. Check, what check, show is that? Game, Game Line Express. Express. Game Line Express. And we're back. Welcome to more Game Line Express. I'm, I'm flying through this level already. I beat this level in one episode. Yeah, that was 20 minutes. Not even. Dude, a little over just having a blast. Oh, this is such a Having a good bitch. time. Having a good time. It's not even over yet. I love this scene, though. What? Watch this scene and let me know. And toys and Adam West, is that you? Hey, huh? What? Oh, yeah, it's that sponge kid. And now, I don't think that's Adam West. No, it's no. no, not even a little that bit. That makes me really, really upset, dude. Like, what? part of what makes Mermaid Man just so absolutely fantastic is the mere fact that Adam West is voicing him. And he's clearly supposed to be a parody of Batman. And Adam West was Batman in the TV show. Now he's just a, a crazy old guy. To do his massage. Who's the guy who voices dude? Barnacle Boy? What if it was the guy who played Robin in the Batman TV show opposite of Adam West? How crazy would that he's be? Have, he has to massage his feet right they now. Ju they just released a movie, actually, a new animated movie. When, and Help, they both they're making me hit roles, myself. And it's written in the classic Batman style. That's pretty uh, badass. It's like Wham Pow. Yeah. I already then. And like Batman and, and Robin are like big Here we go! Batman, uh, they're, like, they're like big blue boy scouts, pretty much. You're surfing on your tongue? Yeah, oh. dude. Everybody was surfing, surfing so USA. I could see Nick or uh, Susie doing it. No, oh, fuck! <laughs> Susie, Susie the Beagle. She, she just goes around licking the floor, and she'll just eat every oh card, man. I need to do it again. You are in the box. Because I need to get that song. Oh, does it play like surfer music? Yeah. That's so sick. I want to go to the actual Bikini Atoll. In Hawaii, where this is supposed to be. There we go. Is it, is it atoll or atoll? Do you like pronounce the vowel or the uh, consonant really hard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, I can't say Oh, it is a vowel. Sure. My a is, a, a is a vowel. I don't know. I'm forgetting my basic grammar here. Yeah. <laughs> is that so? It is so, yeah. A E I O U and sometimes why? Sometimes why? I always do that. I don't know why. I always try to jump there, but it, I have eight. Oh god, he's like punched him in the face. Just my size. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right, it does give me a video. These robot things got nothing on me. Oh, they get close though. If I get overrun, I might get screwed. I know a couple missions that you get really fuck fuck, especially in fucking rock bottom, dude. It's the worst. Rock bottom is the fucking absolute worst. That and the kelp forest one. The kelp forest. Kelp forest is ass. Uh, what other one is shitty? Let's see. Flying Dutchman's is so much fun. I love the Flying Dutchman's, but it's kind of hard. Um. Sandy's tree drone is real quick. It's, not even, it's just like a house. Board. Just like uh, Patrick's bunch house. It's the town's pretty bad. I, I don't like the town that much. None of these levels are actually really fun. Yeah. <laughs> so why do you like it so much then? I, 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 it's not like it's not fun fun. It's like it's like not easy fun. Like it's fun to like, go back and reminisce on how- Whatever red faction on its higher difficulties is not easy either, but it's not have fun with it. Exactly, that's the thing, is yeah. it's not like fun because you're like, you're like constantly like, fuck me. If like, you wanted to actually get a challenge, these games didn't hold your hand. Exactly, that's the thing, and you just kind of like got really good at it and just- Like the like, original Elder Scrolls games, even Morrowind, they weren't nearly as generous with things like quest markers, like Oblivion and Skyrim are. Skyrim, you basically know where you have to go at all times oh, for yeah. everything. They even have a magical ability that lets you make a trail showing oh, yeah. you exactly where to go for your next objective. Like, that's, that's I think that's yeah. what really kills me sometimes. Yeah, so this is the thing. This is where but we got in passion. Morrowind, dude? In Morrowind? A quest can be as simple as, there's a thing in a cave somewhere, I'm not really sure where it is, so good luck. Yeah. And you, that's a quest, and you have to go retrieve this thing from this random cave, or shit like that. Like, it just tells you what to do, but it doesn't it's, even, it's like, like, travel east. 
Yeah, and you're like, what? <laughs> and the map's like giant, so east can be anywhere. And don't even get me started about Arena and Daggerfall. Daggerfall especially. Daggerfall was so difficult, it was notoriously hard to get out of the first dungeon. Yeah. Because they spawn you in in a dungeon. And getting out, dude, it's hard. If you take a wrong turn, you're fighting like Daedra at level one. Like the, I think the, the lead developer for Bethesda at the time when they made Daggerfall did an interview and he said that he, he test ran the first dungeon, the first play of the game, like seven times. He only made it out of the first dungeon three times. This kid. The other four times he fucking died in a dungeon. Damn, that's a way to start a game. Yeah. And, uh, and then you get thrown into this giant procedurally generated universe oh. where only a couple cities are, like, pre-made. And it's bigger than London. So walking across the Daggerfall map takes as long as it would to walk across from London. Damn. And they have a very limited Damn. fast travel system. <laughs> I know, because of Morrowind. Yeah, you have to use silk striders. Spikes, dude. Fuck me. So, um... So then there's all these random cities and towns that are just generally generated by, uh... By, like, a, um... An engine that they use. It's hard. Nobody it's said it was hard. It's got its own charm to it, because it's much more like a role-playing game, like a tabletop translated into video game form than any of the other Skyrim, uh, Elder Scrolls are. You don't progress the same way either, at no. all. It's, it's, you progress much, much slower. Like you have like, to pick what you want. It is to like it's like anything. a role-playing game where if you don't phone, you, you can't. It's very difficult, if not impossible, to be a jack of all trades. You need to have a focus. You need to train that focus in order to make them actually useful. <laughs> oh! It's really good. Oh! Wow, you have a lot of those uh, currency things. I'm actually surprised. Have. They should have. I need. <laughs> oh, I'm wearing sports shots oh. underwear. Oh. <laughs> remember, remember when uh, me and Mike had read that uh, that um paper when we interviewed neighbors. We were wondering if you and Jason wanted to do our interviews. Oh yeah. And uh <laughs> and um we had that idea of like oh, that's right. what if Jason did it in his um the pre the voice like the from Futurama. And he's just like, Casino. Oh they should have those. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Because we because the question, the prompt we were given is we had to ask them their thoughts regarding casino laws in Massachusetts. Oh yeah. Yeah. That that's like a weirdly specific thing. It really that. was. It really was like how they felt about because one of the ballots, one of the questions on the ballot this year, was of course as you know, I think it was question one actually, was uh, if we should grant more licenses for making uh, um, resort casinos. I knew it was somewhere. I just couldn't remember where. And I think like passing it would have resulted in licenses being distributed for like three more casino parlors and one more resort casino. So like a like a like a, a slot parlor is like a building that only has slot machines, and then like a, a resort casino has like table games and slots and you can stay overnight and stuff like that. But it did pass. What are we at this episode? None of your damn business. Only eight minutes. Wow. <laughs> um, so yeah, I already blew through this level. Really? Yeah. It's already almost over? Yeah, literally that's the ending right up there. Did you get everything that you needed? Yeah, so see water? I, you know how I'm not allowed to go in water, right? Patrick is? No, I don't. Oh, okay. Um, I don't fucking take that shit. <laughs> Sock. Look at the way he runs, dude. He looks like kids in gym class in middle school when they tried to learn like Naruto characters. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of us did, dude. Oh yeah, yeah I did. I've been guilty well, of it. I always saw I have the Sonic the Hedgehog run. Cause, that, Cause that's how Sonic the Hedgehog runs with his arms back. Yep, with his feet going in a circle though. It's kind of hard to do that. I always uh. Oh gee, Simpson. Oh gee, I mean he's OG. 
but all right so ready is he though when was the naruto manga first made Ooh, that's a good question that could predate sonic very that, very easily that is a good question let me uh let me uh so Dan, let me investigate this little Chris. conundrum right here so see this watermelon right here yes so I have to get this watermelon all the way up there, fight those robots, and hit the button before it dies. Nice. Right? Do it. Uh, I don't want to. But that's what I need to do. Game so instead, I'm just going to do this. The first release was June 23rd, 1991. It's going to be close, dude. You just use the robot instead. Yeah. Type the reward. Yeah, that would have hurt me if I didn't get that reward, by the way. <laughs> Let's see. 1997. Okay. So, yes, yeah, Sonic is about six years older. Yes. Sonic the Hedgehog. There are. Dragon Ball Z might be older than Sonic, though. Oh, it is. It is. The Dragon, Dragon Ball, Z Ball from the anime, 80s, right? The Dragon Ball anime was re originally released. Oh, you know games. what? I might need. Uh... Wow! So that means the manga could be from the 70s. Oh no, 1984. But yeah, wow, it's impressive. First volume. Imagine having a copy of that. That looks awesome. An original. It is. It does with the dragon. Um, imagine having a copy of that from 1985, like an original first volume release. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I need yeah, right. Completely original. Look at this asshole. Tartar sauce. Yeah, dude. Prepping everyone to be eaten. It looks about as gross as actual tartar sauce does. Look at it jiggling around. It looks like the tartar sauce of Burger King. You know, that's like a brutal truth about like the seafood. <laughs> like tartar sauce. Like we just fry up fish and just smear it with mayonnaise and pickles. Because <laughs> that's how we do it. We don't eat fish like it really should be. It's grilled. No, I'm just saying, like, that's in a kid's show, though. It's a... Yeah. He's a... He's a... Whoa. A little... Some sprinkles and truth nuggets. Dragon Ball Z's fantastic. Some truth nuggets. Dragon Ball Z's fantastic, dude. Wow. Well, I like how Dragon Ball Z's always remembered as a, uh... As a part of our childhood, but it's finished its run in Japan in 1996. Well, it's because it didn't get English dubbed until... Until, like... Two, until early 2000s. That's awesome how it became such a... Of, yeah. Like how so, it, it made that transition between cultures. It could honestly be called the grandfather of all modern anime popularity. Yeah. Not animated like movies, because I mean Hayao Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli have been making movies since the '70s that were even popular everywhere, pretty much. But um, as far as animated television series go, it's just full on. You could you could bubblers. find a you could find a niche market Water bubblers in the nineties of people who were interested in reading and translating Japanese animes in the United States. Probably not a lot of people though. But once Dragon Ball Z came on, that like sparked an interest in that culture. I'm curious to know how many people in the world are bilingual in English and Japanese. Like I said, if there those people in the, in the 90s who were like, in the 80s and 90s who were that, part of that small group of people at the time who were like interested in that, and they didn't have any big publications that were translated for them, so they probably had to learn how to do it themselves. I wonder if there's like a service you can hire to translate things for you. you just go out. Probably, it's called the just, internet, dude. If you go on Reddit, dude, if you go on Reddit under a subreddit for, for anime and stuff, which I'm sure you could easily find, there's probably so many people on that Reddit who speak Japanese and English, and then you could just put whatever you want on there and be like, can I have this translated to English, please? And someone will do it for you probably for free in like 30 minutes. I mean, I can't know for sure, but I'm just, I'm almost certain that that's a possibility. You can probably translate it way better than for you than Google Translate ever will. Yeah. Though Google Translate is close to being... I think it's close to being that good. Tartar sauce. Oh, fuck. You're killed, dude. Wasted, dude. You lose money like in GTA. Again, though. That's pretty good. 
Oh, actually, hold on, I want to do this real quick. I love, it. I love the dialogue in this game. I think it's the funniest thing. It really makes me sad that we're actually skipping through it all, because it's actually really funny. Tell me, you haven't been driving. Of course not, Mrs. Puff. I don't even have a license. What I learned in boating school is... There was just another bad dream. What I learned in boating school is... <laughs> it's just three words! What I learned in boating school is... Blankety! Blankety! Whoa. <laughs> I'm getting targeted off the map again. Oh, Jesus. Fury kill. You go look at him, he's like, whoa! He's like, shit! Now I'm dead. <laughs> yep. Susan the Goodbye. Susan the Oh, Jesus. Oh, he got whacked. He got ham. Bird. Uh, Watch out for the dinosaurs. Whoa. This game's crazy. <coughs> I remember what I need to do here. I have to come back to that though. Dun, 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 dun. Drift compatible, dude. Holy shit. <gasps> wow. That is wow. <laughs> That's like uh, not even funny. That's one of the most drift compatible moments I've ever had with anybody. That's not true. No, it's up there. It is up there. It's when it's okay. So I consider the top three moments now to be when Joe asked me to guess how many plastic forks he had inside his backpack, and I guess guess the exact number. It's like 241 or something. No, 247. And he's like, that's the exact, I just went 247, you know, like, and he's like, that's the exact number of plastic forks I have in my backpack. And then another one was when me and Jason were in the backseat of Matt's car and listening to Rocky the Queen. And when it gets to the part about McGill, you know, her name is McGill, and she calls herself Rill, but everyone knew her as Nancy. As soon as me and him both sung that line, we looked, we like leaned into each other and went, slut. <laughs> and like in the same tone of voice and everything. <laughs> And now this. Now we f we freaked out. It was so funny. Because he told me after, he's like, I considered saying either whore or slut. I didn't know which one, but I went with slut. Oh, Dan. That's, um... Well, do you know, you, have you ever listened to the lyrics of, the lyrics of Rocky Rockin'? Dude, Rocky? I think the biggest, the best time that me, like... Talking about McGill? I think that, I think me, me and Joe have, like, one of my best... It's a hussy. One of my best uh, drift compatibles, and that was um, when Joe had said, "Me and Joe were listening to Rocky Raccoon," and then like a couple hours later, when we were at my hot tub waiting for Jason Gulick to come over, I was just like, I was just like thinking it in my head, and then I go, um, the, "I do the fucking whistle from it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I can't even, I, I can't even remember off the top of my head right now. Cause it's but like, ow, asshole. Um, <laughs> okay, that just so, so, so you're telling the story. Yeah, so, um, yeah, just, we did it at the exact same time, and we just looked at each other like, what the fuck just happened? It's good shit. I love when that happens. I like when you're listening to, when you're think, thinking about a song that you love, and it just comes on the radio. Yeah. It happened to me twice in the span of a week one time. Both times with Mike. I was thinking, we were talking about how much I love Peaceful Easy Feeling by the Eagles. Yeah. And uh, we ta talked about that one story, remember, in Rhode Island? Yeah. Well, guys, we're listening to Peaceful Easy Feeling right now. We cannot be harboring negative opinions of people. You yeah. remember that? Yeah, no, I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> um, so. Yeah. Um, oh, Jesus. And, uh, and then as I was talking about it, I'm flipping through the radio, and then we settle onto 105.7. And it just the very Peace beginning of PC Peace Rays of Healing was playing, and I was like, oh! And I just looked at Mike and I'm like, oh! like waving my hand at the radio. And then a week later, me and him were driving home from Jason's house. And I was telling you, like we were flipping through the stations and Pink Floyd came on, it was another brick in the wall part two. Yeah. Like the only song by Pink Floyd you ever hear on the radio. And um That's so unfortunate too. Yeah. And um and I'm like, oh man, you know, I love this song so much. But I just hear it on the radio all the time. Like if I listen to the wall, 
in its entirety, you know, I'll listen to another Brick in the Wall and came out. But if I just hear another Brick in the Wall Part 2 by itself, constantly on the radio over and over again, it gets kind of old. And I'm like, but now, like, if a song like, um, Hey You or Wish You Were Here came on, and as I'm flipping through the, the stations, dude, I get on this rock station, and I hear, and I'm like, you gotta be kidding me right now. It's fantastic when that happens. This is a mechanic in so many games. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like Ninja Ninja Gaiden. Yep. Hard not hard as hell. I ninja. And I beat the level. Um, and next time on Game Line Express. I think I